what would you say to something like this? Something that makes a one percentage difference in 25 years. Would you call that impactful? No one will. Ah. One percentage impact in 25 years, almost nobody will call it impactful, but that's actually what you get from electric scooters. India's scooter population together emits 30 million tons of CO2 every year. India's total GHG emissions is 3.4 billion tons. The total scooter population of India today emits less than one percentage of the country's CO2. Imagine, you want to electrify all scooters, and you want to have this electricity from a zero carbon grid. All this could take another 20, 25 years, but after all this, what you have is a measly one percentage reduction in our CO2 emissions. That's not impact. I know there are some investors already over here. You would have invested in electric scooters. They're cool. I like them too. They reduce air pollution. There's no noise. They reduce oil dependence. But are they making an impact decarbonization? An absolute no. All right, so how should we innovate? What should we do? for climate impact at scale. That's what we are here for, right? Most of you guys are talking about deep tech. Oh, there could be many pathways. I've been in the sector for 15 years. I've seen multiple pathways. I'm sure the others are going to talk about it. But one pathway I can think of, and the key word there is the industry. Engaging with the industry is one pathway I can really think of which can make a huge difference to decarbonization, carbon reductions. I told you about the electric scooters. The scooters and motorcycles put together in India emit 48 million tons of CO2. The entire two-wheeler population of India emit 48 million tons of CO2. Just one company, Reliance, their carbon footprint is 50 million tons of CO2. One company's carbon emissions is more than all the two-wheeler emissions put together. Coca-Cola uses worldwide three and a half million tons of plastic, which is more than the entire bioplastic production capacity in the world. Just one company uses more than the entire world's production of bioplastic. Oh, this is even more stunning. BASF's main factory in Germany, just one factory, uses as much natural gas as the entire country of Switzerland. Folks, we're not talking about a company, we are talking about one factory uses the entire Switzerland's consumption of natural gas. Just one company, Amazon, has ordered 100,000 electric vans. Now, these are not just small vehicles, medium-sized vans from Rivian. It's still going on, but just one company, 100,000 electric vans, and just one company, in a short period of time, put out a million and a half LEDs across 6,000 stores, Walmart. Just imagine, we are talking about single companies and in some cases, single factories emitting, consuming, producing more than thousands and millions of entities put together. This is the immense power of industry. The immense power of big industry and if we are looking at making a big impact, Folks, we have to look at big things. And industry, the large industry is one such big thing. But then these are large beasts. Anybody who has dealt with large companies know these are very complex 
entities. How do we engage deeply with them? Unless you engage deeply with them, it's almost impossible that they are going to adopt their innovations. I remember 20 years back, I was working in London for a company called Interglobe. Now, these are the guys who run Indigo Airlines. And this is a small, cozy office we had in the middle of London, next to the famous Oxford Street. And this guy, Rahul Bhatia, who is today the big boss of Indian aviation, he used to drop into our office very frequently. It's a small office. He's a big man, but in a small office, well, he has to say hi every time he comes. There was once he came three, four times subsequently, three, four days subsequently, and every time he met me and said hello. The next week, I was given my marching orders. I was told, get out of this office, go to our largest client called Galileo, sit there for three months. I suspect it must have come from Rahul. And the idea was very sound. You may be a sales guy, but sitting in your office, there is only so much you can understand. Galileo is one of the world's largest airline reservation systems. And these are very complex things. For them to really partner with somebody, start outsourcing something, the partner has to be sitting with them, understand the systems very deeply. That's what he did. Three months there, and things happened. Engaging deeply with industry provides enormous benefits. Big industry, but it's not easy. I've been working in the industry for 15 years now, climate tech. Most of the work we did is top management with senior guys, large companies all the way from ExxonMobil to GE to GSK to Reliance. And everywhere, when it comes to innovation, I've seen three stages where three stages, three steps that are required for innovators to really get their innovation into the system. Understand, involve, iterate. Last year I was reading a lot about green hydrogen because we were doing a lot of work in that area. And one fascinating area within green hydrogen is where you can use hydrogen in a blast furnace within the steel industry Instead of using coke to reduce um, iron oxide to iron, you can use hydrogen. And that's a fantastic idea. You reduce an enormous amount of CO2 process emissions from the blast furnace if you use hydrogen instead of coke. Awesome. Everybody was thrilled. And some large, some interesting startups were talking to me. Oh, why don't we use hydrogen in a blast furnace? So I met this guy from Arcelor Mittal, the world's largest steel company, a senior engineer. And I told him, look, this is going on. I mean, do you think you guys can start using hydrogen in a blast furnace? He looked at me for some time and he smiled. And he said, do you think it's so easy? A blast furnace is designed for coke, a solid fuel. It's evolved over 100 years. You can't just take a gas UV and pump it into it. It takes an enormous amount of understanding and research before I can even have 15%, 20% of hydrogen in a traditional blast furnace. Deep understanding and interactions are required for startups, innovators, before you can really get into this kind of an industry and make your innovations count. I told you about my play time at Galileo. Every day it was involvement. I was sitting with the engineering team one day, I was sitting with that senior management team some other day, and the amount of involvement was so high that I was part of the team. I was not an external company sales manager sitting out there. I was part of the team. I was planning things together. I sat with the software team who ran their massive software on a mainframe to understand the complexities. Only then I could realize that, you know, some things that we actually want to be done in Gurgaon cannot be so easily done. Involvement. If you are a startup, if you are an innovator, if you are working with large companies, be prepared to be very patient. Nothing is going to happen in one step. I still remember sometime back, two months back, one of the world's largest FMCG companies came to us. They are still talking to us. Oh, well, you use the product first thing in the morning, so I probably have given out the name already. Almost everybody uses it. 
Now, you see, these guys have a large operation in India. Their challenge was they wanted to decarbonize. From the factory to the warehouse, they use 40 ton trucks. From the warehouse to the retail, they use 7 to 10 ton trucks. They wanted to decarbonize everything. They wanted to make everything electric. I said, look, this is very difficult. You don't have large vehicles running on electric right now. They are all in the initial stages. Of course, there is a company which has announced, launched a 40 ton truck. There's another which has launched a 10 ton truck. These are initial days. I told them this is not possible immediately. They said, look, we are not looking for immediately. We have a seven year plan. By 2030, we want all our logistics to be electric. First two years, all we are going to do is sit and do pilots. We want to do small pilots, learn from them, iterate, make mistakes, take it to the next stage. And this is the way it works. So pilots, learning, first stage implementation, and keep iterating. Before they go here, this is my learning, friends. Large industry has immense potential for decarbonization. You are talking about things that are much larger than entire scooter population emissions. You are thinking about one company producing more plastic than the entire bioplastic production in the world. Talk about one factory consuming as much resource as an entire country. If you are going to make a big difference in reducing carbon emissions, it's not going to come from electric scooters. It's going to come from the Reliances, the Coca-Colas, the BASFs of the world. But engaging with them is a nuanced process for innovators. You see, I have had the fortune to work with all three key stakeholders. Industry, that's my bread and butter. We do management consulting. I work with the senior management of pretty much every industry in this. Climate fix, well, we deal with startups day in and day out. Fascinating last three, four years. And investors as well. We, have, we are going to have close to 70, 80 investment groups and more than 100 investors here today and tomorrow. These are the three stakeholder groups which have to make sure that these large industries are able to get decarbonized through innovations. I see three gaps, one for each of them. If you look at deep tech startups, even though, yes, there is, a night, there is an understanding that working with industry is important, it is not there to the extent required. Most of the deep tech startups still seriously underestimate the extent of industry engagement that they need. What can be done about it? Oh, well, here I think I'm a bit fortunate. The people who are going to follow me, each of them actually represent a lever to provide a solution. Let's look at Monish himself, who is sitting over here. Every time I hear about Monish, I hear about him along with the ministers, senior IAS officers. So Monish probably, for a change, one of those rare days when he's dealing with mere mortals like me. You see, he has the wherewithal. Guys like him have the wherewithal to spread this awareness. They have the government mechanism. He, he has access to government, senior government officials. He can get these guys create the awareness. Investors, one of the key target segments, I know this gap exists in a big way, you guys know it. They do not have industry professionals who can actually help the startups to engage with the industry. Most of these guys are bright finance guys, very bright indeed, but they do not have industry professionals. It's very difficult if you don't have them, but it's not easy to get them. They cannot keep recruiting an industry professional for every startup. I think there the one thing I can think about is engagement models. And fortunately, uh, we have Energy Consortium as a partner. And that, some of the things they are doing actually can help these guys. They can probably get industry resources to help investors for a short period. So that's a shout out I have to Satya. When he talks, maybe he can think a bit about this. And finally, industry itself. The fact is, we deal with senior management on a daily basis. The intention is there with them, but they simply are not in a position to allocate serious resources to engage with the innovators long term. 
it's all start and stop. Oh, there's an engineer who works with this innovator for two weeks, and after that he's gone, he's not even in the country. What is needed here? Maybe somebody like Rahul can answer. His organization, IESA, has the who is who of the industry as their members. He has access to the senior management, leadership, top management, CEOs. Maybe there is something we can do. If we can do this for India, the startups, the BASFs of the world, if they can start with India, they can go to the globe. The opportunity is immense. But it's not easy. Innovators to engage with industry, innovators to engage with industry in such a way that they are able to really get their innovations to decarbonize is a complex process. Some steps over here, and more importantly, we have critical people sitting here who could probably make a start, make it happen, at least make a start to get the things rolling. I hope I've been able to provide you some insights that you can take back, folks. Thank you.